Carl, thanks very much for joining us on afl.com.au. A huge stage, Friday night football, one that the Kangaroos have owned in the past, and you're back on it this Friday night with a top of the table clash. How good is that? Yeah, we're thrilled to be back on Friday night, and it's a huge game. You know, one versus two, probably playing off the top spot on the ladder. So it's a, it's going to be a huge night, and uh, hopefully we get a, you know, a massive crowd along as well. There's great interest in the game. Talk to us about the vibe around the club at the moment. Obviously, the only undefeated team in the competition. Membership going through the roof. I mean, it is only a few short years ago that there was talk about moving this club to the Gold Coast, and now here you are really dominating the competition. Yeah, look, it's, it's excellent. There's been a lot of hard work over the years, but, uh, yeah, we're approaching our, our membership record from last year. Should break that this week and then uh, aiming for 45,000. So that's that, that's going really well. Uh, obviously, the on-field stuff is fantastic. You know, five five wins for five games just places us in a, in a great position to start the season. And talking about on the field, Brad Scott, obviously, you know, he's had a, an up-and-down journey with this team over the past few years. Preliminary final losses are always a bit of pills to swallow. Mm-hmm. But... For him and the, the senior leaders at the club, the guys like Brandon Drew, does this really vindicate the faith that the club's administration has put in these guys? Oh, most definitely. You know, Brad in particular, um, you know, any coach cops criticism along the way, but he stayed true to his values and his beliefs, and he's really shaped the side. If you think about what he inherited uh, when he came to the club and what he's built it to now, it, it's in a great position. And, and the group's really hardened up after a couple of... Uh, prelim finals, you need to go through that. You need to have the disappointment of losing finals, playing in tough games to really set yourself up for a real crack at it. Let's talk about Friday night football and the push for good Friday football, which I guess is the natural extension of that. Is this potentially a test case this Friday night, this game between the Kangaroos and the Bulldogs? Uh, I think it would be a great illustration of us uh, pulling a big crowd on a Friday night and, and justifying Good Friday. So I think it's you know, really positive in that sense. Um, whether it's a dress rehearsal, I don't know. There's a few clubs who've, who've thrown their hat into the ring for Good Friday to partner with us. Uh, so we'll work through that with the AFL in due course. Assuming that it might debut Good Friday football next year, though, and the fact that the Bulldogs are also proving to be really competitive at the moment, is it important that that first Good Friday clash is a battle between two really competitive teams? Yeah, definitely. I, I think it's good. You can you can look at it in terms of the form sides or even um, you know bigger drawing clubs. And, and we talked to, to Carlton some years uh, ago about it as well. And then you know you look at Anzac Day. Um, just gone. Uh, neither Collingwood or Essendon were playing that well, but they still drew a big crowd. So it's it's working out the right mix that will give uh, the biggest bang for the buck. So does Carlton remain your preferred opponent, or you, or you very? It is very much an open discussion. Uh, look, it, it it is very much up to the AFL. Uh, we we had some really positive discussions with Carlton in the past, uh, and they're keen to uh, continue those. So it's whatever makes sense and, and is framed up in the right way for the AFL. But as far as the first team, that's a lock for Good Friday for you. Are you fairly confident in your discussions with the league that, that you will get the berth? It would be pretty staggering for them to overlook you at this point. Yeah, look, we've been lobbying for years and years on it. Uh, you know, JB's been very strong on it with Gil. So, look, I, I think we're well placed. We've, we've, we've had our name up there for a long time. So uh, we'd expect that we'd be the first club chosen for that slot. Now, let's just talk about a couple of broader issues. There's a a really good story right now in footy with Mason Cox making his debut and the US Combine, the next US Combine, is on right now in Los Angeles. You're one of only two clubs that's chosen to actually send a a scout. Does that put you, do you think, at the forefront of of trying to find potentially the the next Mason Cox? Remembering you did have the Eric, Eric Wallace experiment as well. Yeah, look, yeah, we're very keen on, on having a good look. Uh, we did have a good look at Mason Cox last time around. Uh, you know, unfortunately, from our perspective, he went to Collingwood, but it's great to see him doing so well. So I think we're, there's a future for that, for, for players from the US with a bit of talent. Um, there's potential for them to make it all the way. So, yeah, we're certainly focusing on those sorts of markets. Was the Eric Wallace experiment a failure in the end, or is that perhaps putting too harsh a word on it? Yeah, well, no, I don't think it's a failure. I think it's uh, it, it was uh, an experiment at the time, and um, you know, Eric, Eric uh, did as well as he could. Um, you know, unfortunately, he didn't make the grade in the end. But you know, you learn from that, and and I think there's plenty of other talent out there we might be able to access. What about recruiting closer to home? Do you guys have some room to move in the salary cap come negotiations at the end of the year? The, the free agency trade period is now an, an epic part of AFL footy. Yeah. Oh yeah, we all, we're always uh, keen to participate. We've done well over the last few years, so we'll continue down that path, having a look at 
the options and if there's someone there who, who fits a bill and, and fits our needs we'll certainly explore it hard. You're obviously the numbers man, do, do you have room in the cap and how important is it to kind of be looking at that from a C, from the CEO's desk in terms of not just this year but the year after that and the year after that? Yeah look we certainly have uh, capacity to explore that and, and we manage it in a way so you've always got a little bit of flexibility uh, you know if talent's there and it's available. Three more issues to get through. Tasmania, first of all, where are we at with that? Do you see the potential for more games in Tasmania? What do you think about the AFL's push to have a, a longer term, a one club st strategy in that state? Yeah, look, in terms of current deal, we, we shouldn't be too far away. Um, and, and that's for three games uh, for five years in, in Hobart. Uh, and that's been our plan all along. So, so hopefully we'll get there in, in the not too distant future. Um, in, in terms of one team, look, there's been a lot of discussion with that from the AFL. But I, I think the, the Tasmania public are, are maximising their opportunities at the moment with the two teams and the number of games they get there, the content in Tasmania. Uh, with, with one team, logically, you, you probably wouldn't have that many games. So I, I think it's a good model as it stands at the moment. I mentioned relocation before. I know it's a dirty word around here, but is that, has that been completely ruled out, any possibility? Because, I mean, there is that, you know, some, some commentators who say, you know, we should send north to Tasmania. Um, can, can you rule that out? Is that it's completely off the table? Uh, completely off the table. Yeah, it doesn't even come into our thinking and it's something we have always dismissed and will continue to dismiss. Yeah, absolutely. Now, in terms of, just one more question on Tasmania, the academy down there, are you any closer to knowing whether or not you're going to have the entire state? And would you like potentially to have that academy uh, go beyond multicultural and indigenous backgrounds and perhaps expand to other talent in that state? Yeah, definitely. And, and we've explored that with the AFL and and with the stakeholders in Tasmania. What we'd like to do, if we can get the, the games deal over the line, is then concentrate on, on growing talent across the state, um, having academy programs, um, yeah, not limited to multicultural and indigenous, but broader academy programs, uh, male and female. So that's our plan. Is that a bit of a pipe dream though, to get access to potentially uh, that wider range of talent? No, I think it makes sense uh, because there's not a concentrated focus on talent development in Tassie across the board and I think if we can bring that to the table and work with the government and AFL Tasmania, uh, I think it would be great for the state. You guys have been known across the competition for your anti-pokey stance. We've seen some clubs sign uh, anti-gambling deals uh, despite the fact that, uh, if you read the fine print, it's just that they don't have a betting sponsor. They still have lots of, lots of poker machines but you guys are, are in this the whole way. Um, you must be pretty pleased about that. What, what, what do you say to other clubs who are kind of going in half-baked with their anti-gambling messages? <laughs> I, I wouldn't say anything to other clubs. They can, they can do what they like. Um, uh, I just think from our perspective, um, we've been pretty strong on it for some time. Uh, we've followed that path. Um, it, it's working for us as a club. Uh, and, and we don't see the need to, to, to get into to pokies. Um, yeah, other clubs can choose what they like to do. It's, it's not my place to say. Some people say though that the only reason North's been able to make a profit and not have pokies is because of AFL handouts. What would you say about that? Yeah, that's, that's illogical. Um, if you have a look at it and if you knew the funding mix in terms of what clubs get, uh, it, it's obvious that there's certain clubs that receive more funding than we do uh, and they would have pokies. So, um, it, it doesn't carry any water, that sort of argument. And on that, the grand plans. Uh, this is an amazing facility now here at Arden Street. I remember coming down here years and years ago, covering press conferences in a portable over there. Uh, and now you've got this amazing facility. Mm -hmm. What's the, the next step to grow North Melbourne, knowing that your home, as you've just reaffirmed to us, is here at Arden Street? Yeah, look, um, it's an exciting area because there's going to be a lot of development through North Melbourne over the coming years and there's some recent media on it in terms of the plans for the area. Uh, so we're working with all the relevant stakeholders with government uh, and council to look at you know, what do those plans look like um, and how do we play a part in it. Um, not only for football infrastructure but community infrastructure as well. So what could you add on to this complex? Because I know there is a little bit of space just over there. Yeah, look, there's, there's a bit of an extension we could do at the end, which has always been on the cards because we've got an extension slab there. So that, that's one just to create additional capacity because we're at close to capacity at the moment. But then it's looking around the area in terms of what infrastructure is needed uh, and can we build some facilities in the area that would then couple as community facilities as well. Carl, thank you very much for the chat. Good luck on Friday night and good luck for the season. Thank you very much.